Hello. Wait, everyone. Wait a second. What's this? Please, please, can you just give them all the middle claw? You okay? Can you give me the middle claw too? Oh, we, I didn't know that camera was running. Uh-oh. Here you go. <laughs> oh, my cat wanted to get on YouTube. Let me readjust myself. There we go. Welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. You just saw my cat, Chispa. Gonna wave to people. I don't know if she was giving me the middle claw or you guys the middle claw. I don't know. Let's talk about some wrestling. There's the one thing. Do not be like Austin Aries. Do not give fans the, the middle claw. Not good. Um, I gave my shout-outs earlier. I'd like to thank everyone who watches, especially if you like, share, comment. You can always comment and subscribe. You can just ask people who have commented and subscribed in the past. They got a little special video dedicated to them. In fact, eventually I might cut out this video and put that into my gift collection. That'd be pretty cool. But we have two shows to talk about today. We have both SmackDown. It was the 1,000th episode of SmackDown, which actually was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I think there was only one. Eh, match, but that match was still really darn good. And then, well, there were maybe two eh matches, but they were still fun. And then, oh, there's lizards up there. And then we're going to talk about the Mixed Match Challenge. I couldn't believe it. These wrestlers look, this week it's a whole different feel, it's a whole different vibe. They were having fun. Enjoying themselves, living it up, and then the quality of wrestling was the entertainment value of the wrestling. I couldn't believe they put this on free TV. This was amazing. I had to put it on Facebook where even I, Hobo Tom, can watch it. Wow. So let's start off with SmackDown. SmackDown starts off. Um, really just they, uh, throughout the show, and this was kind of the running theme because it was a 1,000th episode of SmackDown, they would show stills or GIFs or short video clips of various SmackDowns for the past 1,000 episodes. Wow. I just realized I have like over 100 videos. I'm actually on pace. I have a thousand videos in about wow two or three years. I just took that just took a second to process, but it starts off with Booth TV, and I, they're still back on the air for whatever reason. Uh, Car Carmella looks like a million bucks, but she had like the sequined. Evening dress that like a real co-host, female co-host, or f would wear on like oh those shows like TMZ, um, anything to do with the red carpet. And Carmella looked like a million bucks. She looked truly amazing. Um, and it comes off her truth. Calls calls Steph McMahon to the ring. She comes out. How's her say? Shane McMahon shows up. And then Vince shows up. So again, you have kind of all the owners. And they were really gracious, I think. Even Steph was a little bit gracious, as gracious as, as Steph, Stephanie McMahon could be. Uh, Mr. McMahon came out. I don't want to hear you two, Becker. We're going to have a dance-off. Or dance break. And Vince McMahon starts to dance with Carmella. And I, I saw that in a
Oh, okay. It's not that bad. I think it was only. I think he danced with Carmelo. I think. I don't even think it was a minute. And it wasn't that bad. It was because my fear was when Vince McMahon did that, it would harken back to the days where he used to just, for lack of a better term, humiliate women. Again, there's a very famous Trish Stratus bark like a dog segment. Was kind of bad. Well, at the time, I mean, you know, the time is really. And I have no idea what prompted this, but then you have AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan teaming up versus the Usos, which which is weird because the Usos are, are really a classic tag team. AJ Styles. And Daniel Bryan, I think they've wrestled against each other, either in Pro Wrestling Gorilla or Chikara. Maybe it's easy W for like one or two off matches. Maybe it was Chikara King of Trios. Again, feel free to comment if if they've never wrestled. If you if you know they've never wrestled, if they have wrestled and it wasn't one of those three promotions, maybe it might have been Ring of Honor. Again, feel free to correct me. I just have a feeling that they've wrestled before somewhere in the Indies. I don't think they've ever tagged together. But Chikara always had weird tag matches. They put random people together as tag teams. Sometimes it was really good. Sometimes it's really funny. Sometimes it's like, huh? Oh, um, I heard this question once. Um, I think someone did mention, I heard another wrestling show, if you had to show your girlfriend or significant other one wrestling match, I would point to Chikara only because it's a little more absurd, but they still have all the classic wrestling spots. And the story is really explanatory. I mean, it's something you can just kind of go into and just really enjoy. So I, I would say probably... Um, Ring of Honor is more technical wrestling. New Japan can just be vicious, and if your significant other isn't into cursing or having a neck-breaking competition, New Japan's not the thing for her. WWE, you kind of need to know the stories a little bit more. Impact Wrestling's that kind of fringy stuff. Where you have the known wrestlers, but you don't know why they're facing off against each other. Especially if you're the real casual fan. But again, that's that's my response. I would say Chicago Wrestling. Maybe Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Somewhere between those two are really good entry points for wrestling fans. I want to say especially around... Anywhere from 2008 to 2015, I think. That's when those two promotions really hit their indie stride. And now they're kind of cycling through because all their stars are going on to Ring of Honor and then New Japan and WWE's. For some reason, it's like the final point. But, but definitely ch check out some Chikara. And pro wrestling match, like, especially older Chikara when it's fun. Like when Drew Gulak was Soldier Ant. Who else? AJ Styles was in Chikara for, especially King of Trios. I mean, those are just amazingly fun matches to watch. Uh, the Ophidian. 
The Osiris Collective. That's not their name. Osiris Portal. That's it. Anything with Delirious, you'll see El Generico, Colt Cabana, real early CM Punk, real early Adam Cole, Joey Ryan, Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae, Princess Kimberly. But again, fill that up. But that's taking up too much time. Let's get back to the smash. This was an amazing match. I really mean that too. I mean, this show was wow. Yeah, this was there was only one cheeseburger match. This was not it. And trust me, the little cheeseburger is the lowest ranking I gave this entire show. I can not believe they put this on for free. I don't really know the motivation why they would have them tag up. Um, I know they're going to face each other. They do have the whole spirit of a competition thing. And again, it is a way for them to kind of get used to working with, with each other. Because eventually they'll have to turn, someone's going to turn, unless they do a face face match, which is always, which is always fun. Fun to see. Um, again, the club. Usos put on a tag team clinic. I mean, they know how to double team. They know when to double team. They know how to double team. I think they had AJ Styles in their corner. Um, they get, go, uh, double Insiguri. Did a good tag team work. Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, and Daniel Bryan seemed to click during their tag match. They knew when to tag. They, they were humble enough to tag out when they knew they needed to. And they realized that they had to tag in, that they had to extend their hand, extend their hand to their partner and say, here, tag me, tag me, tag me. So they, they knew how to do that. There were dual submissions at one point. AJ Styles had the calf crusher in. And on the other Uso, I, I can't tell them apart. On the other Uso, Daniel Bryan had, had the yes lock applied. Um, there was some dissension. There was an uh-oh moment. Uh, Daniel Bryan did AJ Styles in the head. I think that led to them losing, actually. Yeah, so I, I want to say the Usos went over. Again, mainly because there was there was that miscommunication there, and you'd expect that. But for the most part, it was it was a protected loss. It was a tag team loss. The two people that aren't familiar, so so you can see AJ losing a match like this, and it's perfectly believable for him to retain the WWE Championship because he's not a tag team specialist. He's a single specialist, especially against someone who he has no or very little little familiarity with in Daniel Bryan. And I mean, oh my gosh, what they did in the ring? This was a surf and turf quality match. Um, that led to a backstage segment with Paige. Paige is, Paige is there. Nikki Guerrero shows up. What? And then it was... Play a play a play a Teddy Long showing up. Again, all the past SmackDown managers. So it was, it was good. Um, then we had the Evolution show up of Ric Flair. Woo! Triple H, Randy Orton, and Dave Batista showed up too. I mean, they, they all talked a little bit about each other. Batista really talked about all three of them. Really gave, gave laudable praise. I mean, Randy Orton has, has more skill in his pink, has more skill in his pinky than some wrestlers do overall. He just told Ric Flair to keep it in his pants. And then even to Triple H, he he told he told the crowd all about all of Triple H's accomplishments. But the one accomplishment Triple H doesn't have, he never beat Batista. So maybe that's a setup for something down the road. Um, it won't be a crown jewel the way that's going. It might be the last crown jewel we have. I guess I could always do a Great Britain crown jewel. That makes sense. Um, the Australia show, again, that, that we still have good relations with Australia. Where else could the WWE go? They could go to Mexico. Do something south of the border. There's always Canada. America's hat. Uh, where else? Those are probably the big countries. I 
don't think they would go to China. Maybe go to Japan, though? I know in the past, BWE's done work with New Japan Pro Wrestling. South America, maybe Brazil. More so Mexico, though. So the potential places where WWE could have part of their next show, Australia, because they got a really good response. Great Britain, and that could be probably London or England. They could probably also... I wonder if they could sell out Cardiff at Arms Park in Wales. Again, that's all part of Great Great Britain, though. That makes sense, the, the, the crown jewels. They could have a King of the Ring tournament in. In Greater Britannia. Um, Canada, they've been there a couple times. Mexico, they could definitely go to. If they're on good relations with New Japan Pro Wrestling, I know they go there every so often for house shows and kind of special events. I mean, they could go there. I mean, a few other countries, but I think those are those Great Britain, Mexico, Canada, Japan would probably, and Australia, be like the five friendlier countries to go to for another big show. But that's a debate for another day. So then this led to kind of the low, low point of the match of The Miz versus Rusev. And again, this was a really fun match. It really showcases The Miz's heel talent while trying to keep Rusev really that true face persona. Um, Aiden English comes out, distra distracts Rusev. <laughs> it just gets him. And let's just say Aiden English is going to be singing soprano for a while. But she wound up too. Whoo! Yeah, woo! That's what he's going to say. Uh, Miz did go over Rusev with a skull crushing finale. Again, again, do the just. What was it? No, it was a roll up. And the Miz is, again, he's a heel. He's supposed to win by nefarious means, or this time just a very, dist again, distraction would be nefarious. So, again, it was, it was a fun match, though. And, and this is what you, you would expect a, a classic cheeseburger match should be. It was fun. So the Miz is moving on to the greatest superstar in the world. Whatever. Um, then you have Kurt Hawkins and Edge. Edge comes out, does his own promo. I mean, he does a little bit, bit of an Eddie Guerrero tribute, which was really cool. I mean, Eddie Guerrero was really a part of SmackDown. And Eddie Guerrero probably passed away way too early. I, I, this is so long. I think it was a heart condition. I think it was that weird time where Eddie, Eddie got kind of jacked off of steroids and who knows what else at that particular time frame. And again, it was just, it was really good. I mean, Edge gave a really heartfelt promo. Um, talked a lot about Eddie Guerrero. Talked about being a champion. I mean, really good. And then oh, he called out Becky. Oh, my God. Evil Becky. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Evil Becky is. Oh, so amazing. And just to paraphrase, it's like, oh, Edge is like, you're going to have no friends, you're going to have all your championships, and you'll have nothing else. And you won't even like yourself. No one will like you. You won't like yourself. And Becky seemed to be on the verge of tears. She was loving. And she was on the verge of tears, and she's like, I won't like it. I don't like me. I 
Love me. Oh, he tried to turn her back from the dark side. And she said, eh, eh, I love being evil. More evil Becky. And the crowd was cheering Becky. Oh, she was eating it up. Edge, by the way, is no one to speak of doing good or bad deeds. Okay, so. First of all, he has to try and create a little bit. I mean, he, he is most known, besides his tables, ladders, and chairs, and matches between the Dudleys and the Hardys, for, for um, uh, canoodling with another wrestler's girlfriend at the time, or wife. I think it was girlfriend. I honestly forget. Again, it's so long ago. And he's also the only wrestler, I think, across almost any promotion or any major promotion that had a live sex show. Okay, so Edge, be careful what you mention. But Evil Becky's so, so good. More oh, Evil Becky. Poor Charlotte had to come out, set things straight. And it was, it was, it was a really good promo. So let's see, I'm going to take a quick little break here. Be right back. There we go. Yeah, my video recording software is not the best. I think around 22 minutes it starts to do wonky things. So I just have to kind of reset every so often. Hey, it's free, it works. Um, then you have Jerry the King Lawler and Booker T come for guest commentary. Oh, yes. Um, actually, I forgot to mention this that during the Miz and Rusev match, you have Kurt Angle there. But yeah, it was it was really fun. It was it was really a showcase of everyone. And then you have the New Jay versus the Bar. So good. I don't know what to say. So many amazing, so many good spots. I mean, classic tag team worth by both teams. They these two teams really work amazing together. Cesaro has to be the strongest man in the WWE because he managed because he managed to do a deadlift gotch neutralizer on Big E. Big E's not small. I mean, Big E could famous. Oh, so good. 
And the fun thing is, the bar know that they're healed. Um, at one point, I mean, I could go through it point by point, but I want to say... I want to say Seamus had... Big E up in electric chair position. And then Zara came off to the flying European uppercut. Seamus dropped him. Went for the pin, but Seamus knew he was close enough to the ropes. And this was a title match. So he put his foot on the ropes. Hey, this is what heels are supposed to do. They're supposed to win by nefarious means. Kofi Kingston said, what are you doing? He knocks his feet off. This is a great match. Don't spoil it like this. But Kofi, you know what? He's supposed to do this. He wants to win. What, what was... Who's, who said it? Oh, Jesse the Body Ventura. Win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. That's what any heel tries to do. So I can't fault him for doing that. I can't fault him for wanting to win. By any, if, if the ref doesn't see it, if the ref don't see it, baby, it didn't happen. Only a penalty if the referee sees it. So again, Kingston kick off, picked his feet off the ropes. Um, he begins to confront Sheamus about that. Cesaro knocks him silly from behind with a European uppercut. Then Xavier Wood comes in. Big E still kind of recovering in the ring. Big um, Xavier Woods comes in. Or, no, he comes... Yeah, he comes flying from somewhere. At least that's what Xavier Wood does. Bar catches him, throws him chest, throws him first into the card rail. That was so good. And then Caesar and uh, Cesaro, Caesar, and Seamus begin to tear the one table apart where Jerry the King Lawler and Booker T is like, ooh, we're going to get a table spot. Then you hear, oh! It's the big show. Comes down. And Caesar and Cesaro and Seamus don't know what to make of it, so they go back in the ring, or at least away from him. And Big Show choke slams Kofi Kingston, which is legal because Kofi Kingston is not supposed to be part of the match anyway. So Corey Graves, I mean, he's that heel who makes good points. It's like Kofi Kingston's there. He got involved. Hey, the Big Show's loving the playing ground. He didn't go out. The Big Show didn't go after a Big E, nor did he go after Xavier Woods. So if he Kingston wasn't a part of the match, pff, tough. His bad luck. And then the bar won, and it was the, with a bro kick for Sheamus, and it was this was an amazing match. I couldn't believe it. That they would show this match on TV because that's two SmackDown matches that are surf and turf quality matches. So, that, that, how was, and the only reason it was a surf and turf quality, and I'll flame me on, is because the big show showed up. I mean, if they would have won through normal means, even if it's nefarious means, it probably wouldn't have been flaming on. But the fact that the Big Show showed up, I'm like, eh, 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 it's a little distraction thing. It was, it was a good, fun match. Again, Cesaro did have some problems getting Big E. He still got him off the gosh neutralizer. It's still impressive. I couldn't do that. Probably tear muscles I didn't even know I had in my back. And hamstrings and, and gluteus maximuses and calves and biceps, triceps. I <laughs> just being a full body cast. Just wheel me around, not even, a, not even on a wheelchair. Put me on one of those dollies on the cartoons. And there was a John Cena promo. I, I, I do remember when he was the professor of thugonomics. And I, I want to say he got wetted by Stone Cold, which made people Stone Cold more. And then it doesn't matter who you are. So that so he made 
people cheer for the rock more. And then he, uh, he went on his old, old career, and it's like, yeah. This is what it was. Then we have oh, Rey Mysterio match. And it was Rey Mysterio versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And this felt really like a WrestleMania moment. It felt like a WrestleMania match. It felt like a WrestleMania moment. Shinsuke, again, the classic striker. Ray with Lucha style. It was so different in style. So many contrasts. So many, so, so many spots. I mean, Rey Mysterio did like like a like a sliding flop, I guess, because he he slid like Shinsuke was laying down flat on the mat. Rey Mysterio comes and just slides right down, hits on. He, like, he, I don't even know what to call it. I just call it a sliding flop. I mean, he hit the 619. Um, Rey Mysterio won, too. Oh, that's right. I feel bad that Shinsuke Nakamura is not, not going to... Well, probably good, I guess. But, I mean, Rey still has their chance for Rey. I mean, this felt like a big money match. It's just not a regular TV match. So it was really good in that in that regard. Then, then you have the Undertaker promo. And I can appreciate this because it, it, it's scruffy Undertaker, not the clean shaven original Undertaker, but kind of the Undertaker right after that, where he was kind of scruffy looking. Came out in the classic under again classic Undertaker clothes. Um, wasn't wearing the gloves per se, but kind of the long Undertake the, the Undertaker gloves. And and again he can still he can still cut a good promo about rest in peace. So overall SmackDown was amazing. Oh, and that again, Rey Mysterio, Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean that was a surf and turf quality match. If they gave it I don't know if Ray could go another they could probably go another ten minutes. Shinsuke could. Uh, if it was 10 minutes longer, that would have been a flaming young match. I can't complain, though, because you have three surf and turf matches on SmackDown and the fourth match, which is cheeseburger match. Amazing. So that's it for SmackDown. I'm going to take another quick break. Let me recharge myself. We're going to talk about the Mixed Match Challenge. Oh wow, that's a little longer than I thought it would. I need to reload my gifts. I have to I have to make my own gifts. It is fun to steal them though. So oh dear, let's go to some mix and match challenge. Oh, this was so much fun to watch. It's so amazing that from week to week you can have such varying degrees of entertainment from really the same group of core wrestlers. But for some reason, the wrestlers, the, the, the teams today, are having fun. When the wrestlers are having fun, they seem to be a lot looser. They're, 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 still, their, they're still their persona. But the crowd gets their energy. The crowd gives them their energy. And it's just a whole, it's a whole cyclical thing. The wrestlers have energy. The crowd gets hyped. 
and then the rest of us get more hyped. So it was it was the probably the best mix match challenge probably this season. So you have um, the first part. You have country dominance with Bobby Lashley and Mickey James versus Team Paws with Natalia and Bobby Roode's her new partner because Kevin Owens is having his knee scoped. I do not know how bad it is. <laughs> the funny thing is, and the crowd, the crowd picked up on this. This was a really smart crowd, especially when it got to this point of the show, because because they still had a lot of energy. They had a lot of they had a lot of umph in them still. So all four wrestlers in the ring, and you just hear, Bobby, 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 Bob. Wait, wait, but 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 wait, which Bob, which which, which Bobby are we chanting for? And again, the women were in their respective corners. And Natalia would, would point to, to, of course, Bobby Roode. And people would go, Bobby, Bobby. And then Mickey James would point to Bobby Lashley in her corner. And the crowd would still go, Bobby, Bobby. So you had no clue who the crowd was cheering for. And the wrestlers really seemed to enjoy it. it they were just having fun. I mean, then Natalia tried to put the cat ears on Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley heals it up. He kind of had that, that goofy smile. Like, he had that genuine smile for like a second and then realized he should be in character. So he realized, I'm, I'm smiling. <laughs> like Natalia put the cat ears on him. Like when my girlfriend dresses me up, I have that smile for about five seconds and I realize my girlfriend dressed me. And Bobby Lashley had that look, so he still had that, that that smile because I think he realized he was smiling. Then knew he wasn't supposed to be smiling, so he just kind of when while he was smiling, he just took the ears off, and then he just stomped them. I mean, that's such a heel move. It was fun. He gets booed. <laughs> um. Oh, another question for you folks out there in, in YouTube land. I know both Bobby Lashley and Bobby Roode. We're in Impact Wrestling. Or then it was called TNA Wrestling. Or was it still... Or what, No, it wasn't Global Force. It was still TNA Wrestling. I don't know if Bobby Lashley was around there that time. But just to see... Only because I don't know. I'd rather ask the YouTube audience. I'm sure someone might have heard it. Did Bobby Lashley ever take on Beer Money? Then it was James Storm and, and Bobby Roode were beer money. So I'm just curious if, if Lashley and Root ever went at it in TNA. Um, but Natalia, Natalia and Leo Rush. She just told them to shut up. I don't know if the, the production's a little bit different, but the mic seems to be a lot more live because Really hear what the wrestlers are saying. Um, now there were some other funny moments too. Not in this match, but oh, Leo Rush just looks even. I think he looks more mature without his with his haircut. And again, you always have to figure out who's who's gonna tags and stuff. So, I think the only down point of this match is that it was a horrible double cross body by an Italian Mickey James. Because Mickey James just looked like she kind of some like stood there and like jumped in some, in some Italia from her feet. She didn't get any kind of horizontal position. So it didn't look look pretty. <laughs> Again, they were funny chance. <laughs> when Bobby Roode and Bobby Lashley got in the ring, they would chant, Let's go, Bobby, Bobby sucks. So you never know who the crowd was chanting for. Um, Bobby Lashley eventually does, does mock the glorious thing. And I think Bobby Roode was just happy. 
that he didn't have to be the glorious Bobby Roode. He was having fun with it. He, he seemed a lot more relaxed. He's like, okay, this is a wrestling match. I know how to wrestle. I don't have to do all this smiley stuff. I, I can enjoy myself. And he seemed, and he, this time he seemed to have really a genuine smile on when things were going on. Uh, again, Rude tries to use the ropes for momentum. He's a smart wrestler. He knows he's a smaller. He's much smaller than, than Bobby Lashley. So he used to get all of his momentum in. So he was using the ropes, going for clotheslines, and being the bigger man, Bobby Lashley did the smart thing and kind of no soul that he, he, he would wobble. Oh, 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 T's falling back. But he never f fell down. He never took that bump. And it may seem realistic. Again, Rude's much smaller. I don't say much smaller, but definitely smaller than, than Bobby Lashley. And it was just fun. Um, Bobby Lashley, again, they actually teased a double sharpshooter. Mickey James was tapping out, but Mickey James was not the legal person in the ring. Um, Bobby Lashley did go over. Bobby Roode ate the pin, but you know what? It was fun. I mean, they just really seemed to have fun in this. And for that, the wrestling was good except for the one spot. It was fun, entertaining, that the crowd was really into this match. So that's going to make this a surf and turf match. And the second match, I didn't know it could get any better. Yeah, team. Awesome versus Ravishing Rusev Day. And so you have Asuka and the Miz. Asuka just looks like she's having fun. It's so funny. And the fact that right before the match, they did a Italian Bobby Rush interview and, and a Bobby Roode interview. And it was going well. Bobby Roode's going to stay with Natalia. I think they, they'll probably have one more match together. But <laughs> Oscar just came out of the middle of nowhere in, in her amazing championship, Japanese championship robe. Her mask on and Ms. sunglasses. And just started to speak Japanese. I want to know how Cole, Michael Cole knows what Asuka said. Because I forget what he said, but he's like, oh, yeah, Asuka meant to say that. So, and everyone, you could almost feel their eyes like, you understood that? I mean, it was so good. Um, they also had a, right, I think right before the match, after that, it was, yeah, it was right before the match, they had a, B and B team is Finn Balor and Bailey. They were doing a selfie promo, and you can see like emojis pop up. And I don't know, that was at least kind of cool. It it, it kind of goes with Bailey's whole character, so that was pretty good. Then they had kind of like the words. So it was okay. It was fun. I mean, also it still seems to be a really full stadium too. So the crowd endured probably about two and a half hours of the regular show, because they always have the announcers get, get a pop when they come to the ring. There's always a dark match. So this was two and a half hours they were still there. Some of them probably stayed the extra half hour, 45 minutes for 205. Then there would be a dark match. So that would probably be about three and a half hour show. That's probably pretty good. More about this match. It came awesome. Oscar and the Miz and, and Lana and Rusev. My only thing with Lana, it's not even going to affect the match because at least she was speaking in Russian this time the whole match. Um, they, they tossed her their ripped t shirts into the crowd, and, and, Lana, and Ru Lana and Rusev just seemed to be having fun. Um, Lana loves 
Although the, the one thing is, I think Lana kind of had a loose face. She had that smile. Like, I have to smile. No, we're not going over the. And I know I'm meeting the fin. Or I'm meeting the top hat. So Lana kind of had that loose face on the way to the ring. Ah, Asuka Demon bothered to take her shirt off. And, and you know it was, it was going to be a fun match. Rusev just looks like he's thoroughly enjoying himself. And it may be that thing he's getting to spend really more. And I, I, I have no idea what's going on. But I, I would just infer that he's just really enjoying himself, spending more time with his wife, doing the thing he loves to do. And, and he gets to do it with, with his wife. And I'm sure if you ask any married couple, I mean, that's probably really what they want to do. It's like, yeah, it's like you want to work, but sometimes you have to work separately if you're in the, in, in the wrestling industry. I'm sure if you work together, I mean, that has to be, besides being brothers, I mean, you have to be the number one tag team chemistry ever, right? But he just seems to be really enjoying himself. He seems really to enjoy working with Lana, especially when, when it's really relaxed like this. So Rusev, unless I'm totally wrong, is thoroughly enjoying this. Um... Lana and Asuka have a little bit of a dance-off. Asuka does, like, something si simple. She just sees her little hip wiggle. Lana almost goes, like, full twerk. And then does the Lana Rooney. That was so good. And, of course, that, that brings the Miz in, because the Miz doesn't want to have fun. He wants to have a wrestling match. And because the Miz came in, then, of course, we're going to have Rusev come in. So then all four of them are there. <laughs> the next part was so funny because everyone but the Miz gets gets cheered. Like Lana would point to Rusev, yay! Lana would put her hands up, yay! Oscar would put her hands up, yay! Miz would put his hands up, boo! What? Lana, yay! Rusev, yay! Oscar, yay! Miz, boo. Yay, 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 boo. And <laughs> even the Miz really seems to relish that. It's probably that, that one fact. I know when you hear a lot of wrestlers talk, the number one thing, whether you're a heel or face, if you can get a reaction from the crowd, whether you're getting cheered or booed, that's really the thing that they want to do. They've, I, I've always heard them say the worst thing that could ever happen is the crowd's quiet. And you can hear crickets. So the, the Miz is just, again, enjoying himself. And then Lana and Rusev give each other like the biggest planted smooch kiss in the middle of the ring. And then they point to Oscar and the Miz. And the Miz shows up his, his left hand. I'm a married man! Even Corey Graves, the heel makes sense. Wait, the Miz can't do that. He's a married man. That's cheating. That's adultery. He can't do that. Of course they don't. And then, the, then the match starts proper after all the fun. Uh, Alana, I think, kick, um, Asuka kicks like Lana. It was really fun. I mean, again, there was the, always the back and forth. The Miz eventually pulls Lana off of Asuka, and then, of course, Rusev gets in the ring, and then both The Miz and Asuka go outside the ring, and Rusev's kissing a suicide dive. So Miz does the all-time classic heel thing with a female valet, and that's put Asuka in front of him to take Rusev's suicide dive. <laughs> Oh, good. Asuka had this look like, what? Lana's like, you're not a gentleman. You take the hit. Oh. I think Lana did botch something. Oh, yeah. Like, like she had problems getting in the double accolade because at one time they were going to go for a double accolade. But I was so tickled and having so much fun, and I was thoroughly enjoyed. Um, then, of course, the Miz is on the outside. <laughs> and then, of course, that distracts both Lana and Rusev, thinking that in English is bad. In English is just like, 
<laughs> now for for a while after the kick Lana gave him. Um, <laughs> All of the WWE couples, I have no idea if this is true or not. They have to hang out together because they seem to have so much chemistry together. I can know the Miz and Maurice. That again, they had the show Mr. and Mrs. And I th think they were on Total Divas for a while. But the couple seemed to have so much fun with each other. Like, it would just be fun to hang out with Miz and Maurice. Because I have that funny feeling the Miz is an 11, but Mike Mazzano's just at 5. Like the like the personality of Mike Mazzano is the Miz just turned up to eleven, or the Miz is just a Mike Mazzano turned up to eleven. Because uh, again, he he got in, he got in the ring. Maybe it was one. Maybe maybe that was when he pulled Lana off her. They came into this to disrupt something, and and she, and she just starts to like shove him, like like give him like pokes to the chest, and he's like, "You can't touch me," and then Lana. <laughs> does the annoying finger poke you know what that finger poke is it's like eh eh stop poking me stop poking me and I think eventually she did slap him and then of course Rusev have got involved I, th I think um, Miz and Rusev were kind of semi brawling or at least they both fell out of the ring together and then of course Lana was distracted and the Lana got put into Oscar Lock and the Oscar one. I was thoroughly entertained by this. I don't care what any other wrestler reviewer says. This was a filet mignon match. If for no other reason, then I was just thoroughly entertained. It was a satisfying finish. There were antics involved. Whenever you have good antics involved, you are going to get a high rating from this guy. If I understand your antics, and your antics have purpose. And they add to the match. They don't take away from the match. The, the wrestling was good. The wrestling was solid. Again, one boss, you think? I, I mean, I, Ilana's character work was so good for the whole match. But this, for that one thing, I could forgive. Again, it is accolade, and even I don't, I don't think even they knew what was going on for a while. Oh, again, they have a, they must have a really live mic, because somewhere there, I mean, you could, you could hear like, like, oh no, it was in the previous match. You could hear him say like, like, okay, hurry up. So, so the refs even like prodding him, and the wrestlers are like, yeah, we're having fun. So that was my whole review of SmackDown and the Mixed Match Challenge. Again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see everyone Friday when I do my Lucha Underground. Have a good night, folks. Bye.